the scene. I seen a little girl standing outside. I seen a lady up inside the the house burning and talked to her. She was saying there was kids up there. I was telling her to throw them down, but she couldn't find them. And so I told her to go ahead and jump. She jumped. I picked her up and pulled her out into the grass in the front yard. Adams County Coroner Chris Boyer says the badly burned bodies have been taken to Springfield for an autopsy with results expected in a few days. They were found in an upstairs bedroom. It looked like they've been trying to get out. Assistant Chief Don Heckel says the nature of the fire prevented crews from getting to the boys before it was too late. Our people were getting lines inside and uh, uh, Lieutenant Peter did say it was extremely hot in there with even with their gear on. So they were trying to do their search, try and find anybody. Four engine companies responded to the two alarm blaze, and one crew remained on the scene for four hours. The matter now is in the hands of investigators from the Quincy Fire and Police Departments. They continue to search for clues as to how and where the fire started. Brent Engel, KHQA TV 7 News. The boy's mother, 30-year-old Veronica Nelligan, is in serious condition at a Springfield hospital. Their 10-year-old sister and a 16-year-old boy were treated at Blessing Hospital and released. Scaffolding collapsed inside a grain bin in Florence, Illinois yesterday. One man died, another was hurt, and a third escaped injury by holding on to the scaffolding until rescuers pulled him to safety. They were working for a waterproofing firm inside a bin at the Cargill grain elevator when the accident happened. The man killed was from Indiana, as was the injured man. He's in serious condition at a Springfield hospital at last report. A day of skydiving turned tragic yesterday on the East Coast. Federal investigators are combing through the wreckage of a plane that crashed in rural Virginia yesterday, killing 12 people. Nate Custer has the latest. State police say the Beechcraft twin-engine Queen Air had just taken off from the West Point area, which is a base for a lot of skydiving flights. The aircraft came down into the rear of a house on Route 606 in the Plainview area of King and Queen County. Michael Harris saw the crash, which killed his brother as he sat on his back porch two houses down the street. I don't see the plane that's coming down, just wobbling like this, and all of a sudden, I just told him my wife and kid to get out of the way because it looked like the plane was going to crash. And no sooner I said that, it just made a couple of flips and just crashed right in the house. Ran over and holler for my brother, because my brother is my brother's house. And I went over to holler for asked his son where was his father and where his mother was at. He said his mother was gone and his father was in the house in the patio. So that's why I went back to the patio on the back side, on the left over here, and I couldn't, I didn't see him anywhere. Now federal and state investigators must find out why this twin engine plane crashed here, killing 10 skydivers, the pilot, and the man in the house behind me. Nate Custer reporting for CBS News from King and Queen County, Virginia. Hurricane Luis is losing strength, but still packing a punch. It hit the coast of Newfoundland, Canada with 90 mile an hour winds, rain and heavy surf early today, but it's expected to lose strength as it moves out into cooler water. The devastation though still is being felt throughout the Caribbean. At least six people died on the Dutch-French island of St. Martin, one of them an American. Six deaths have been confirmed on other islands, dozens of people are missing, and property damage is being estimated in the billion dollar range. Tourism is expected to be hard hit in that area. Listen to what some tourists who got caught in the storm have to say as they return home in Mike Johnson's Across America report. It was supposed to be a vacation, but it turned into an ordeal for tourists returning to the U.S. after an encounter with Hurricane Louise. They're among the first to return to Boston from St. Martin. I can't decide. I, can't, I have never felt anything like this. What's the word? I don't know yet. I think in a way it's more traumatizing than... An earthquake, because an earthquake's over in a minute. This is forever. Luis is sending out high tides and dangerous riptides along the East Coast. The Coast Guard has been called in to rescue swimmers who got pulled out too far by the dangerous seas. Officials say there's no reason for people to be swimming in the rough water. It's just too dangerous. It's a beautiful place, but Olympic National Park in Washington State can be lonely if you're lost. Two women reported missing on Friday couldn't find their way out, so they created their own distress signal in the snow, an SOS made out of rocks. The signal led a rescue crew to the hikers who are in good shape. It wasn't easy getting trucks loaded with newspapers out of a printing plant in Detroit. More than 1,500 strikers met them at the gate. 
the publishers came up with another way. They decided to fly the newspapers over them. Sunday's editions of the Detroit News and Free Press were airlifted out of the printing plant right over the heads of protesters. After nearly a century of travel, the Broadway Limited has made its last trip between New York and Chicago. The train had to be shut down because of Amtrak's budget cuts. It has served us well. This equipment's been around for, you know, 50, 60 years, and, uh, but it, it can't keep up. The line began in 1902 as the Pennsylvania Special. Amtrak will save $17 million now that it's shut down. I'm Mike Johnson reporting. President Clinton is in Illinois today. We'll tell you which campaign speech he's making. We'll check in with Phil for the weather forecast, and we'll have your money and market report. Stay with us. Mercury is high, but payments are low at your Chevy truck dealer. Discover model year-end savings during summer value days. Lease the new Chevy Blazer Motor Trends Truck of the Year for only $369 per month for 24 months with $18.25 down. Get a hot deal now during summer value days at your hometown Chevy Geo dealer. If you're serious about a future in automotive and diesel mechanics or auto body and collision repair, call Badrod College at 217-224-0600. We've been offering practical, specialized, no-nonsense training since 1969. Get a jump on your career. In a perfect world, every car runs on ethanol. Every bus runs on soy diesel. And one corn hybrid is all you need. Until then, we have the right hybrids for the real world. Today's market report brought to you by your local DeKalb dealer. Thanks for staying with KHQA's new news. President Clinton is scheduled to be in Carbondale at this hour. He'll speak at Southern Illinois University about his plan to balance the budget without hurting programs for education and job training, such as student loans. He says Republicans want to cut billions of dollars in student aid. The president likely will get quite a lot of support at SIU. More than 80% of the students there got federal loans and grants last year, totaling $115 million. Some of those Republicans Clinton is swinging at today are on the campaign trail in Iowa. Presidential hopefuls Arlen Specter and Pete Wilson will be there. Phil Graham has wrapped up his two-day visit in the Hawkeye State. In Illinois, moving state to state, the university says it needs more money. It's going to ask the state for more than $850 million for the next fiscal year, a 6% raise in its budget. 4.5% of that would go to faculty and staff salary raises. And in Missouri, if you're a French wine connoisseur, you have a Missouri man to thank for that. Some history buffs in Neosha want to build a memorial to Herman Jagger, who ran a winery outside of that town in the 1800s. He's credited with saving the French grape crop by developing vines that resisted a pest that had wiped out millions of acres of vineyards in France. The French government even gave him a medal and built a statue in his honor. Jagger disappeared from Neosha shortly after his vine-saving feat. But residents believe he's worth remembering. Some good sports went to bat for a great cause in Hannibal yesterday. Donna Head takes us to the fundraising campaign kickoff for the United Way of the Mark Twain area. Employees from area businesses gathered in Huckleberry Park to compete in the second World Series. But in this game, everyone was a winner. The game is the kickoff event for the Mark Twain area United Way. And campaign chairman Ed Foxall says they cover a large area. We fund 20 agencies in the Mark Twain area. Mark Twain area encompasses Hannibal, Palmyra, Monroe City, New London, Perry, and Center. Foxall says he expects this year's fundraising campaign to be a success. 
everyone's coming out everyone is pulling together where our campaign slogan this year is joining hands and hearts and we're seeing lots of evidence of that this afternoon this is the official kickoff as i mentioned our goal this year is two hundred thirty five thousand dollars and if we have this kind of enthusiasm and this kind of uh, participation uh, it surely is going to be a positive for 1995. The tournament winner got the chance to play the United Way All-Stars team made up of businesses and industries in the United Way. Donna Head, KHQA TV7 News. And our own Sarah Dine served as a celebrity umpire for the softball tournament. Now looking at today's farm market activity at St. Louis, Barrows and Gilts, 50 cents higher, ones and threes stopped at 49 and a half. Sows were $2 to $2.50 higher. The heavy stopped at $37 to $39.50. St. Louis cattle prices, steers and heifers a dollar higher. The steers stopped at $60.50 to $63. Heifers a dollar higher too, $59.50 to $61.50. Peoria hogs, barrows and gilts, 50 cents lower. Ones and twos stopped at $48.50 to $49. Twos and threes, $46.50 to $48.50. Sows a dollar to $1.50 higher. The heavy stopped at $37.50 to $38.00. Peoria cattle steers and heifers two dollars higher. Steers topped at sixty to sixty-three. Heifers at fifty-nine to sixty-two dollars. At Central Missouri Livestock Auction, barrows and gilts fifty cents to a dollar higher. The ones and threes topped at forty-nine fifty. South were absent today. At the interior hog markets, barrows and gilts in Illinois steady. They topped at forty-eight to forty-nine for the ones and twos. Twos and threes forty-five to forty-nine. South steady to a dollar higher. Heavy stopped at thirty-seven to thirty-eight dollars. In Missouri, barrows and gilts sold steady, topping at 47 to 48. Sows were one to two dollars higher. The heavy topped at 34 to 38 dollars. In Iowa, barrows and gilts steady to 50 cents lower. They topped at 47.50 to 48.50. Sows steady to two dollars higher. They topped at 33 to 36. On the Chicago Board of Trade, September wheat at 4.55. That's down seven cents. September corn at 2.89. That's down two. Beans at 619 down four cents and September oats a dollar sixty six and a half down three quarters of a cent. On the Chicago Mercantile Exchange, October cattle at 6517 down 25 cents. October hog contracts 4560 down 27. And Dow Jones averages 30 industrials at 4721.50. That's up 20.78. Meteorologist Bill Johnson joins us now with a look at your weather forecast chilly this morning when you and I came to work. Is it warming up out there? A little bit. Uh, temperatures are, uh, will be into the 70s today. And as I uh, talked to everyone about their uh, weekend excursions, fond uh, memories of the weekend weather. It was gorgeous with clear skies. Lots of sunshine and cool temperatures. We do have some rain uh, falling on the forecast, so for tomorrow, and a slight warm-up as we go into the end of the work week. We'll have all that in your seven-day forecast. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Cooking at your Chevrolet Geo dealer. Announcing Summer Value Day's model year end savings. Lease a Chevy Lumina with dual airbags, AM FM stereo, and a 160 horsepower V6 for just $229 a month for 24 months and only $1,700 down. Get a hot deal now during Summer Value Days at your hometown Chevy Geo dealer. Synchrony STS is the first soybean seed and herbicide made to work together. It does not come with brakes. It does get over 30 broadleaf weeds, and then you're rolling with no crop stress. Your beans are headed to canopy faster, and you just go with it. DuPont Synchrony STS, the bean machine. Today's weather report brought to you by Synchrony STS Seed and Herbicide System, the Bean Machine. Welcome back to your new news. Here's your midday outlook. Clouds will continue to move in from the west across the tri-states as temperatures warm into the middle 70s for daytime highs around 76 degrees at 3 o'clock. We'll keep a mostly cloudy sky in our forecast right through the early evening hours. 74 degrees around 6 p.m., 66 by 9 o'clock. Currently in Quincy, we have a partly cloudy sky, a temperature of 69, southeast winds at around 8 miles an hour. And as we look across the nation as of this lunch hour, there 
are a good deal of clouds moving across the Rockies. There is a developing storm system here. Only lightly scattered rain showers, though. It's not a very strong storm system, but this is the one that will bring us our next uh, best chance for rain on into tomorrow. Uh, off to my uh, back here, there's the remnants of Hurricane Luis moving off into the uh, northern Atlantic. And Carol thought it was cool this morning in the Tri-States, around 50 degrees. How about 27, 28? Some of the uh, record lows this morning in northern New Hampshire and northern Vermont. Uh, quite a chilly start there with uh, lots of frost, so an early start to uh, the fall season for them, for sure. Back here in the Tri-States, we'll look for highs in the middle 70s across the region today. Pretty much uh, just a little bit below the normal for daytime highs. We should be around 80 degrees, but we'll be in the mid-70s. And low tonight, not quite as chilly as the past couple of nights, uh, upper 50s. That's thanks in part to the uh, clouds that are moving in. Uh, warmer air is trying to spread northeastward, and anytime you have warm air clashing with colder air, clouds are the result, and that's what we're seeing across uh, Missouri and Iowa this afternoon. Right now, no rain-producing clouds. These are high to mid-level clouds that will only limit our sunshine a little bit. A cold front by tomorrow afternoon will help to produce widely scattered showers and thunderstorms across Missouri and Iowa and eventually into west central Illinois. We have a two-day rainfall forecast that will help tell us exactly how much rain we expect. And through 7 a.m. tomorrow morning, uh, maybe just about a quarter of an inch, pretty light. Uh, the heavier rain still out towards the west of us in Kansas and Nebraska. And then eventually as that front moves eastward with time by midweek, 7 a.m. Wednesday, maybe up to a half inch uh, through our area. So overall, not a big rain event, but hopefully if you need some rainfall in your area, that you will uh, see some scattered showers as we go into the next 24 to 36 hours. Well, late-day clouds building in across northeast Missouri and southeast Iowa. We'll go for a high of 75 degrees in Keokuk as well as Macomb. 76 is in Quincy, Pittsfield, and Hannibal. 74 in Newark, uh, Missouri. Southeast winds a little frisky at times at around 10 to 18 miles an hour. And as we go into our sun cats, you can see the clouds, how they affect uh, the ultraviolet forecast into the low category here, and that's where we'll stay. Just about a 45-minute uh, burn time if uh, you're outdoors this afternoon. Tonight, mostly cloudy. Maybe a chance for a late shower uh, or isolated thunderstorm probably after midnight for northeast Missouri and southeast Iowa. Staying dry east of the river. Overnight lows in the upper 50s and lower 60s. Continued southeast winds. Widely scattered showers and a few thunderstorms tomorrow throughout the day. So you'll want your umbrella uh, morning, noon, and afternoon as well into the evening hours. South winds tomorrow. 75 for Quincy and Pittsfield. 74 in Keokuk and 76 in Hannibal. Here's the rest of the forecast as we wrap up the work week and into the upcoming weekend. Still a possibility for some morning rain showers on Wednesday and cloudy and cool. I have around 73 degrees, 75 Thursday. Plenty of sunshine as we go into the weekend with temperatures slowly warming up into back to the more normal ranges of around 80 degrees. So it's a couple more days with the cool stuff and maybe some of the wet stuff yeah. for tomorrow. Sunny looks great though. It looks perfect. Thanks a lot, Bill. We'll be back with more in just a moment. Look, lawn mowing is no picnic. I want a mower that can do the job fast without a lot of stopping and shifting. A mower that can make the turn around the tree in one pass. Cut a square corner on the first try. Don't show me some mower in a showroom. Show me how it works on real lawns. My lawn. I want a mower that'll cut my mowing time in half. I want a Dixon ZTR riding mower. Take one home today with Dixon Blue Line credit. See your local Dixon dealer today. serious about making your best deal on a new Ford car, the absolute best time to do it is now. Your Ford dealer's receiving his final shipment of 95 bottles. He's serious about moving them out, and the time to talk really big savings is now. If you're serious about driving America's best sellers, the time to talk low lease rates is now. The time to talk low financing is now. So for the best selection, get to your quality Ford dealer's factory authorized clearance now. Your quality Ford dealer for the Tri-States is Jim City Ford, featuring the best deals on the area's largest selection of quality Ford vehicles. That's Jim City Ford in Quincy, Illinois. Today, Mr. Food shows you how to wow your friends and family with an easy as pie custard dessert. The famous Hispanic dessert flan is getting very popular in the restaurants. It's like a, like a caramel custard, but we don't usually make it ourselves because it, it costs them made in a water bath and will we spell it and will it come out right? But if we do it this new way, with pasta, yep, little teeny pasta, then it's a sure thing snap every time. Here's how, and you can use any brands at all. In a blender, we combine two eggs, a cup of milk, a quarter of a cup each of brown sugar, white sugar, flour, and butter, and one and a half teaspoons of vanilla extract. 
we blend it on low, maybe a minute, pour it into a bowl, and fold in a half cup of little orzo-shaped pasta that we've cooked according to the package directions, so that now it's about one and a half cups worth. Now, we pour the whole thing into a grease deep nine-inch metal pie plate, and it goes into a preheated 350 oven, about 35, 40 minutes, you know, until it's set. Now, when it comes out, we mix a quarter of a cup of brown sugar with a tablespoon of butter and a half cup of sliced almonds. We sprinkle that on top, pop it under the broiler for about two minutes till it's bubbly and golden brown, and it's a creamy something to bite into flan, or a custard with a crunchy top to serve in pie wedges, warm or cold, and it's no fail every time. And if you'd like the recipe, just send a self-addressed stamped envelope marked Flan and Custard to me, Mr. Food, right here at the station, and we'll get it back to you for that classic taste of home comfort with no work or worry, no water bath or spills, no nothing, except a lot of food. so good. And joining me now on the Tri-State's Date Book is Dr. Arnett Gordon, and he's here to talk about a special stop smoking class that's going to be going on all this week in Hannibal. Thanks very much for being with us, Dr. Gordon. First of all, let's get the whens and the wheres and all those kinds of things out of the way. Where's the class going to be held? It's at the uh, Seventh-day Adventist Church in Hannibal. Okay. And uh, it goes off on James Street and up there. Okay. And when is it being held? Starts tonight. At? 7.30, I believe. Okay. And then it runs every night through Friday night. Okay, so just five days. Right. And people are going to not want to smoke after these five days. Well, that's, the, I, I would say probably over 90% will break the habit. That's wonderful. Now, I assume that the reason you're here is because you are conducting the class. Is there something special? Is there something unique about this class? Because there are a lot of smoking cessation classes out there. First of all, it's free. You don't have to pay. Mm, that's Secondly, it works. And uh, <clears throat> it's been held probably for about 30 years now, mm -hmm. so it has a long history. Many, many people. I've held several hundred classes, and uh, it's very thrilling to see some of these folks break the habit. In fact, uh, Bob Wilbanks from WHO in Des Moines took the class when we mm -hmm. had the class up there, and he was very happy about it. Mm -hmm. and asked if he could speak to other classes because he was so thrilled with it. I see. Well, that's great. Is there some special technique that you use? I mean, we hear about hypnosis and we hear about all kinds of things. Well, we, we uh, got to realize that smoking is a problem and we do mention some of the problems such as cancer and emphysema mm -hmm. and things like that. But what people don't realize is that there are things in our way of living that cause us to want to smoke. And so when we bring those things up and get people away from them, then we get them away from the problem of smoking, see. Because a lot of young people start smoking, and they don't realize that some of the things they do are setting a trap to get them to, to smoke. Yeah. All right. Well, if you are interested in this class tonight, it's 7.30 at the Hannibal Seventh-day Adventist Church. Right. All right. Thanks very much, Dr. Gordon. We'll be back with more in just a moment. Why do I go to Quincy Back and Neck Care Center? Because it works. I work hard every day. I need to stay healthy to continue to work. That's why I depend on Quincy Back and Neck Care Center. I'm glad there's a choice other than drugs or surgery for back pain, sore shoulders, headache, and other conditions that affect me and my family. They can help you too. Call the Quincy Back and Neck Care Center for a free health screening and evaluation. What's the best way to help ensure your financial future? Find out by watching KHQA TV7's Financial Live Line, your direct link to local financial experts. From investment and estate planning to making the proper business loan, you'll get free financial advice on how to make the most out of your money. So prepare your questions, then watch and call KHQA TV7's Financial Live Line, live next Thursday night at 7, only on KHQA TV7. Mark your calendar for Thursday night, September 14th. That's when the unlimited wing sprint hit the track at Quincy Raceways, just three miles east of Quincy on Route 104. You've never seen anything like them, and they're only at the Quincy Raceways. The hot laps begin at 7 p.m., and the races get underway at 7.30 as the unlimited wing sprints roar around the quarter mile. 
Don't miss the thunder and excitement at Quincy Raceway, just three miles east of Quincy on Route 104. When was the last time somebody offered you a price reduction? Not lately, huh? Oldsmobile announces a $1,500 price reduction on Sierra. No confusing rebates, no hoops to jump through. Just the same great old Sierra for less money. $1,500 less. So if more car for less money sounds good to you, see a tri-state Oldsmobile retailer. It's your money. Be sure to join us for KHQA's evening news tonight at 6 o'clock. We'll have the latest on the investigation into Quincy's fatal fire this morning. Plus, tell you how you might be able to avoid such a tragedy in your home. Also, Matt Lorch will take you to a Fort Madison company that makes some of the food you probably have in your pantry right now. Those stories and more tonight at 6 on the evening news. Join us then. Well, here's a riddle for you on this Monday. What sounds like a swarm of bees it smells like burning rubber and attracts thousands of people. If you were anywhere near Uptown Quincy yesterday, you know the answer is the 11th annual Uptown Karting Classic. Julie Glenn lets us in on the racing action. Driving 80 miles an hour in Uptown Quincy is usually against the law, but if you were traveling inches off the ground in a cart, you were in the clear during this year's Karting Classic. Since speed is of the essence, safety takes the driver's seat with countless officials watching the track like hawks. If a wreck throws a wrench in the action, the race staff runs to correct the problem, and a karting language lets drivers know to look out. Basically, you got the three yellows here, the flashing yellows, mm -hmm. and what they do is if we have a wreck on this corner, they're pointed down the straightaway, and we have a switch over there, we turn the switch on, and it flashes the yellows towards the carters. They also see the flags and the yellow flashing lights. And it kind of helps them uh, really get an idea there's a problem up here to start slowing down. No one's more keenly aware of safety concerns than the driver's families who cheer and hope for the best. For many moms, the best is for their sons to make it through the race unharmed, not necessarily with a first place trophy. Hope and pray they get through the entire race safe. I don't care where they end up as long as they get them through it safely. And he did well. He finished in the back of the pack, which is okay with me, just as long as he didn't come out hurt, and he, was, he did fine. Okay. He did excellent. <laughs> but sometimes even the drivers get a little nervous. Billy Trenier had his first street race, and on the starting line, he wondered if I was going to make it or not. <laughs> but you made it, that's good news. Yep. With a collective effort by families, racers, and officials, this year's Uptown Karting Classic has been an all-around success. Julie Glenn, KHQA, TV 7 News. You know, your fellow meteorologist Gary Gleishman was supposed to be in the media race yesterday, but we haven't heard anything about it. We haven't seen any video of it. Is no news good news? Well, I don't, I don't know. know. Yeah, or or is just... he embarrassed by his racing performance? That's the question. Not at 6 o'clock. Well, <laughs> <laughs> Gary's probably going to let us know. So. Thanks for joining us. Tune in again at 6. Illinois Tourism, this is Kathy. Kathy, summer's over. We still haven't gotten away. So this weekend, we really just want to... Relax? Yeah. Bed and breakfast? Exactly. Late morning cups of tea, small talk with shop owners, afternoon nap. Oh, that's perfect. The Spoon River area is gorgeous this time of year. Elizabeth Town's another great getaway. Or Nauvoo. As summer winds down, Illinois is more colorful than ever. With a million ways to spend a weekend. From leisurely bed and breakfasts to pumpkin fests and country harvests. Call 1-800-2-CONNECT and our travel counselors will help you plan the perfect getaway. Call right now for a free Illinois weekend travel kit with guides, directions, everything you need for a great weekend in Illinois. And here I thought we were too late. Your timing's perfect. Find yourself a million miles from Monday this weekend in Illinois. For your free weekend travel kit, call 1-800-2-CONNECT today. Catch Galena's annual fall tour at Historic Homes, September 23rd and 24th. Or celebrate harvest time at your Brooks Dargana in Bishop Hill. Only in Illinois. This on Gordon Elliott. First of all, y'all better keep your mouth shut. They got the back-to-school blues. I'm really sick and tired of my family putting me down. Because their looks are turning heads the wrong way. What's wrong with the way they look? They're ugly, man. Shut up, shut up. I'm going to be 18. I act like a female. So Gordo's giving them some class. You look amazing. I might have to lock them up with that look. I want to look cool for the first day of school. On the next Gordon Elliott. Gordon Elliott. Weekdays at 3 on TV7. Sunshine and warmer temperatures return to the tri-states. I have the details at 6.